Hey guys, going on? Megan here. So let's take a look at this study. It looked at the effect of vitamin D on muscle strength and hypertrophy in a group of young and old men. Now the results were all over the place, but we'll go into that. Long story short, the young group is at the top, the old group is at the bottom, and let's focus on CSA, which is pretty much hypertrophy. And as you can see, the white bar is the group that took vitamin D. Keep in mind, it did not take enough vitamin D. It was actually a very, very pussy dose. But it was enough to see bigger changes in hypertrophy compared to the placebo group. Now, it wasn't statistically significant, but as you can clearly see, it was enough to raise an eyebrow. As far as strength, only the other group noticed a vast, vast increase in the strength to CSA ratio, which is pretty much how efficient your body is at producing force. So the young group put on a ton of gains, more than the placebo group, and the old group put on a lot more strength. And this is in spite of the fact that they used a very, very pussy dose of vitamin D. Another benefit of vitamin D supplementation was the fact that the younger group had a greater increase in type 2a muscle fibers long story short those are the muscle fibers that grow the most from training and the most important part is the change in myostatin as you can see here the young group had a much bigger much bigger drop in myostatin compared to the placebo that did not take vitamin d but anyway this is another episode of myostatin monday this video should be up tomorrow as soon as i find time to edit it and make it shorter Guys, my videos are always like fucking 20 minutes long and I have to cut it down to 10 minutes or less. You guys have the shittiest attention span ever. But anyway, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday where we talk about everything related to myostatin, which is by far the most important molecule if your goal is to put on ridiculous muscle size. Remember guys, three things determine how big you get, right? Your androgen receptor content, the amount of satellite cells and nuclei in your muscle, and your myostatin levels. And out of those three, myostatin is number one. Now for those who already know what myostatin does, you can skip to the next chapter. For the new guys, long story short, it's a gene that your body produces that limits how big you can get. So what it does is it lowers protein synthesis, it increases protein breakdown, so it fucks up your gains, it lowers satellite cell activation, and it makes you insulin resistant, which pretty much makes you fat over time. Now, phyllostatin is the opposite of myostatin. It's the protein that your body makes to counteract the effects of myostatin. So it's the most anabolic molecule in the body. It's even more anabolic than testosterone. So long story short, myostatin bad, phyllostatin good. As you can see here, the reason why cancer patients and HIV patients lose muscle so rapidly is because myostatin goes up under those conditions. Same reason why when astronauts go in space, they lose a ton of muscle mass. Myostatin goes up. Same reason why when you immobilize your leg or you put a limb on a cast, the reason why it shrinks and loses so much size is because, once again, myostatin goes up. By the way, cortisol is the main upregulator of myostatin. And for those who haven't seen this before, this is an example of how powerful the phyllostatin and myostatin pathway is the rat above is the normal rat the one below has been genetically engineered to overproduce phyllostatin and to lack myostatin completely so as you can see it has four times the muscle mass that is the biggest change in muscle growth that we've seen in the entire literature right so best case scenario is having myostatin as low as possible and phyllostatin as high as possible Here's another picture where you can see the leg difference, night and day. And there goes the actual rats before they were killed. Unbelievable. Same age, same everything. Only difference is myostatin and phyllostatin. Keep in mind, no testosterone, no steroids, nothing. Just to show you how powerful that pathway is. And this is the famous monkey that was injected with phyllostatin in his leg. And just a few weeks later, look at how much muscle size his legs gained. And this is the video of the 10-year-old kid in Asia who has a myostatin deficiency. He completely lacks the myostatin gene. So his muscles are pretty much allowed to grow without restraint. As you can see, at 10 years old, he's way more developed than the average 10-year-old, which is right next to him. And he looks like he's on steroids, even though he's on absolutely nothing. Look at his back and leg musculature, even his neck and traps. Unbelievable. Just to show you what can be achieved with this pathway alone. Remember, professional bodybuilders and people in the juice have to take at least three to six compounds, sometimes even more, just to look anywhere close to that. And he looks like this naturally. So once again, it's all about the myostatin phyllostatin pathway. Even IFBB bodybuilders, the reason why they look so cartoonish and so huge is mainly because every single steroid, every single PED that increases muscle mass pretty much 
interferes with the myostatin pathway, right? So even if myostatin goes up, they usually increase phyllostatin or find ways to inhibit its activity through IGF-1 or other pathways. And even as a natural trainee, study after study after study after study have confirmed that the most important thing you should worry about when you step foot in the gym is how can you downregulate the myostatin gene, right? The more efficient you are at downregulating it, the more muscle mass you're going to put on. So don't think just because you're going to the gym, you're low in myostatin. It doesn't work like that. And you have to do enough volume. You have to do enough frequency. And you obviously have to train with enough effort, right? Not everyone who goes in the gym lowers myostatin, which is why not everyone who goes to the gym puts on muscle. You might put on strength, but in order to increase muscle mass, you have to downregulate myostatin. But anyway, watch my previous videos. I went over all these different studies. So now you finally see why everything that blocks myostatin to a great extent is banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. All right, so back to the study, young group, other group. So let's look at the top, quadriceps CSA, cross-sectional area. That's pretty much gains. Um, the group that took vitamin D, which is the white bar, as you can see, more gains than the placebo group. Now, once again, it wasn't statistically significant, but it was significant enough to show an effect, right? And the reason why it wasn't statistically significant is because, once again, they only took about 1,900 IUs, right? That is a pussy dose. You need way more than that to realize the full effects of vitamin D, right? The average person needs at least five to 10,000 IUs, especially if you're bodybuilding. If you lift weights, you need at least five to 10,000 IUs a day, right? Because we're not getting enough sunlight. Remember, guys, vitamin D is produced from your skin. When it comes in contact with sunlight, most of us don't spend enough time outdoors for our skin to synthesize enough vitamin D. And most of us don't eat enough fish to get it through our diets. So over 90% of people who live in the modern world are vitamin D deficient, which is ridiculous because it is one of the most important hormones in the body. Remember, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. It was called a vitamin by accident. If you watch my video on sunlight, it's called sunlight is anabolic, something like that. I go over all the details of vitamin. It has a ton of effects on muscle growth, fat loss, your mood and energy levels, your health. Right? It is not optional. The reason why you don't hear it mentioned enough is because there's no way to monetize it. Right? Big corporations can't really monetize the beneficial effects of sunlight. Right? You can't patent the sun. Right? Vitamin D is cheap, so they don't talk about it enough. And you guys know I'm all about the basics. Focus on the basics, right? Get your sunlight. If you can't get enough sunlight for whatever reason, get it through vitamin D su supplementation. But you are missing out on all of these benefits if you're not getting enough sunlight or if you're not getting enough vitamin D. Remember, we evolved to be hunters and gatherers. We evolved out in the wild. We, we were not designed to be indoors all day, right? So that's why we have all these issues today. I mean, look at all the things that vitamin D plays a role in. Cancer prevention, heart disease prevention, blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. Notice how these are all the issues of the modern world. And sure enough, if you look at the vitamin D levels of people who live in the modern world, our vitamin D levels are trash, right? Most of us are below 30 nanograms per milliliter. You need to be at least above 40 to reap all the benefits, right? And people are around 20. If you have darker skin, if you have nigger skin like myself, you fucked, right? You're even worse. Because remember, guys, the reason why we have black people and white people is because of vitamin D. Right? All the people who live next to the equator where there's plenty of sunlight, we have a lot of melanin that protects us from sunlight. But the downside is that lowers the amount of vitamin D our bodies can make. So, so we have to be in the sun a lot longer in order to synthesize the required amount of vitamin D. Meanwhile, the people who left Africa and went into the northern latitudes where there's not enough UVB rays, they had to develop lighter skin in order to better absorb the UVB rays. Right? The ones who went to the north and didn't have a uh, you know, a mutation that allowed them to have lighter skin or whatever, died out, right? Because there's no way. If you have a ton of melanin and you go in the north where there's not enough sun, you fuck, right? Because now you're not absorbing calcium. Bone density sucks. Your muscle mass suffers. Your health suffers. Your immune system suffers, right? And you eventually die out. That's why you're not going to find a single, a single hunter and gatherer tribe, even back in the old days, uh, with dark skin in the north, right? Unless they obviously had access to, like, you know, fish and stuff like that so they can make up for the lack of vitamin D synthesis, right? So long story short, the average white person, right, because they don't have melanin, they can produce enough vitamin D in five to 10 minutes of sunlight. The average darker skinned person needs at least, depending on how dark you are, at least one or two hours. And how many people are getting that, right? So don't neglect the basics, right? Look at the effect of just a pussy dose of vitamin D on muscle size, right? And for the old group, that strength went through the roof. And if you look at fiber type, look, they had a significant increase in type 2A fibers, fast twitch fibers. Once again, thanks to vitamin D. And if you look at myostatin expression, forget about this part. That's just a vitamin D receptor, and that's the enzyme that 
activates vitamin D and converts it to its active form. But anyway, if you look at my statin, once again, the group that took vitamin D had a bigger reduction in myostatin, which explains the favorable changes in muscle morphology. See, who would have thought sunlight indirectly lowers myostatin? Because remember, we were designed to get our vitamin D from the sun, right? There was no vitamin D supplements back in the hunter-gatherer days, right? And fish was not always abundant, depending on where your ancestors lived. So our bodies are like batteries. We're like Superman, really. We get charged from the sun. So conclusion, yes, sunlight indirectly, again, through vitamin D, lowers myostatin and helps you maximize your results from the gym. In younger people, you can expect an increase in fat storage fibers and a slight increase in muscle mass, 11% compared to 7% for the placebo group. And in old people, you can expect a ridiculous increase in strength. But keep in mind, these were at the low doses, right? The study should have been done with much, much higher doses. But anyway, that's it, guys. If you need more information on vitamin D, sunlight, and how it affects your gains, watch my longer video on that. It's called Sunlight is Anabolic. It's like 30 minutes long. I go over every single detail, the studies, everything. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.